All right, what is going on, everyone? And welcome back to more Black Desert. So today was patch day, February 22nd, and we're going to go over them. So there are some interesting changes that I want to talk about. And I just wanted to remind you guys what events are going on because they really go out of their way to make finding the events as hard as possible on the patch notes. So this is what we're here for. So anyway, uh, I skimmed through the notes before, but we're just going to read it together and um, just give you my thoughts and opinions on all the cool stuff that's happening. Um, okay, so first of all, major updates. So let's see. They are changing the posture on the wizard. If that's considered a major improvement, uh, got a lot of problems. But anyway, with that said... Um, before we do anything, also, I want to say, can you hear my mouse clicking, by the way? Because I got a new one, and I'm, like, afraid that it's going to pick up everything, and I we don't want that. So, here. Can you hear that? If not, let me know. If you can or can't. All right. So, anyway, improvement on the wizard's posture. We've been preparing this change... For, since September of 2021, so basically almost two years. And apparently this was a huge concern. So people like Big and Shiny, uh, let me know what you think of this. I like your fat wizard, by the way. All right, so wizard's model. Yeah, let's watch this. I don't know, like, when I think of a wizard, I don't think of, like, warrior kind of thing. Kind of, like, you get what I'm saying about the different body structures of, like, a wizard versus a warrior or something. I think that's what they're going for. I don't mind it. That's cool. I think it looks fine. Looks like every other character, but apparently wizards got it. Cool stuff. Neato. Alright, so. Catching up with the events. This is one of the big things that we want to look at because... I don't understand why they can't just put this... Like, on the same page as everything else, but they have to put... Everything on a separate tab. So anyway. Number one. What are we looking at? Seventh anniversary coming up, I think in April or late March, because uh, Black Desert on NA and EU, it released in April of 2016. They did have an open beta back in March, so I don't know when they're counting it technically. I played through both of them, so yeah, we're going to see. Uh, seven years of Black Desert equals 700% hot time XP bonus. Basically, go grind, go life skills, do whatever. Uh, they're bringing it back. That's good. XP is always nice. Um, you're invited to the Black Desert 7th anniversary party. Um, help Lara and Heidel thingy. Uh, special festival invitation. Get a special title, depending on when you're... Or, or like, what year your family was created. Mine was 2016, or... Yeah, whenever it released, so whatever that means. I think if they make it like year one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, mine would be Valinus. So that's cool. One thing I did read about this was um, this title, it will be deleted in like a month, which is always such a like weird thing to me because one thing that I've been told is, and just like in general for a lot of games I've been playing, Titles and, like, achievements are very contested things in games, like, they're accomplishments, and everyone wants them. And the fact that they're just giving us a temporary title is just, like, a slap in the face. I wish they just didn't do this. Like, yeah, it's a cool that thing that they realize that people have been playing this game for a while, but, I mean, like, if, you, if you've been playing for a while, you should just get them permanently, and, um... You know what I think would have been better? Like a unique title, but 
you just keep it permanently. Or instead of having the town names, it'd be like year one player, year two player, or you've been playing for X amount of years since uh, your thing was created, and that's just permanent. So it's unique to everyone. And um, I think that would have been cool. But, you know, it only lasts for a month, whatever. It's just another gold title for a month, whatever. It's a cool idea. It's just I wish it wasn't temporary. Uh, Spring Herbalist Abound. Basically, let's read it. I think if you gather, uh, Lost Herbalist appear anywhere except Valencia. You find them. You trade energy, you get a bag. The bag gives fruit of an, like fruit of things, whatever. That's cool. These are like the all the fruits are at least on NA. They're sold out because alchemy is a very hot top, hot like life skill for end game players, and you just craft a lot of things. So yeah, basically all of these are pretty much sold out, and the fact that they're just giving them away, that's good. Cool. I don't think it's going to fix the market or anything. It's just nice to have. Um, next, a mysterious herb is now growing in Balanos. Log in each day and get something. This is a three-week event. So just log in, get a cool reward. Connect your nodes to Finto Farm and send workers to the Fragrant Spring thing. Finto Farm. Let's look at the end game, actually. This is why we have it pulled up. All right. Uh, Finto Farm. Where is that? Oh, okay. So they added a temporary node to, like, these two things, which... Remember when I made my node bin... Uh, worker guide, you should have these nodes already on there because uh, chicken meat and eggs are very important. Potatoes are okay. I mean, they're just free money, but these two nodes are in general worth it. So you should have them by default and it's like a beginner node. So you should have them. All right. So we got 43 of these already. Um, let's see. What did they look like? One quest for family spring herbal decoration. We always get the event items. Then Dirty is an 80 stack. Oh boy, more fail stacks. And then a 7 day box. I assumed a 7 day box. If I remember it correctly from like other things, it's more just um, like a 7 day comma book or something. So. 7 day box. Let's look at it. It literally doesn't tell you what's in the seven day box. But if I had to guess, it's probably like one of those uh, seven day value pack, a uh, old moon book or blessing of comma silve. I assume that's what it is. So that's good. I mean, literally just set up a node. You have zero effort. <clears throat> NPC is looking for herbs that you can get. Find them. These are 10 hour buffs, I believe. And this one's like combat, uh, PVE or something. Like one is XP, one is item drop rate, which is loot buff, life skilling, fishing, and I think another like different horse training. So this is not new. They've had these before. It's like a 10 hour buff. Just do that and talk to the NPC. Exchange the thing, easy. 24 hours only. Spring letters from the GM. I like how they say 24 hours only, but then this is like four days. But, you know, it's okay. Cool stuff. We'll let that go. Make sure to check your mailbox in-game every day before they disappear. <clears throat> so starting technically tomorrow. So today was maintenance day. And after, like, the time reset rollover, that's when it starts. And then you get some goodies. That's nice. Take a screenshot of your wizard and then send it. They'll use it for like competitions and whatever. Or just like nice screenshots. Get prizes. Cool. 
This one is, I think everything else is already started and going. So yeah, just log in rewards. All right, cool. So yeah, that's all the events. I think some of them are pretty good. I mean, it's just like more incentive to grind and everything. Um, so yeah, Witch got big changes today. I, I've played both Witch and Wizard. Honestly, like if you are a new player wondering what the difference is, uh, besides gender is, um, which is like lightning and fire and water, uh, wit or that's wizard. And then witch is like earth and poison kind of stuff. Um, it's a lot of uh, descriptions and visuals. Okay. Which change fixed emotion so that the motion connects more naturally on lightning skills. I actually, I like Wusa more than Megu. It's just, Megu is just significantly better than Wusa. And you know one thing that's always bothered me? I understand like with the new region, they have to get out some new characters as in like something that would like fit the theme. But it's been over one season, so like over three months. And I feel like Wusa and Megu are just incomplete classes because they only have succession now. And I think I remember reading somewhere that Awakening was probably going to take them a few more months. And I was just like, I wish you guys would, one, stop making characters and just start balancing all the other classes. Uh, I get that Pearl Abyss is trying to make money and everything. It's a company. I get it. But at the same time, it's like, you think people would pay more if they had their classes like balanced and it, like everyone who enjoys their main, they would be more like willing to spend more if they were happy with their current class instead of re-rolling. I have no idea, but um, it just makes me feel like if they're going to keep releasing classes and then have them like incomplete for a good six months that's a little bit concerning actually and like i get it it's flashy it's cool flavor of the month kind of thing but then even with the two new classes of wusa and megu megu just like dumpsters wusa and basically everything it's like they couldn't even balance the two new classes to be the same but uh overall i like wusa more um it just like fit more my play style a little bit more so good to see that uh things are getting changed around with that megu megu is just kind of cracked fix an issue from a certain distance the clone would not be displayed for other characters while the skill was active why is that a problem i think the number one complaint i've seen from pvpers like whether you're fighting a Megu, or you're playing as one, is the clones are very, uh, they're very strong, and it doesn't even matter, because you could just, like, swap, like, you know, your main versus the clone, and so, like, if you're not even in range, like, why would it matter? So, apparently, this is, like, this feels like a buff, but I don't know. Um, this one is a big one that we talked about a while ago. The number of contribution points for each node has been reduced. And so when I woke up today, I had like 10 extra contribution points and then I put it into a new farm. So yeah, if you want to read it, this is basically it on the official patch notes um, before and after. So I don't actually remember what changed for me, but I got some more back. So that's nice. Worker promotions have been increased which is really nice because it's been six almost seven years now and so basically here's what i recommend to most people you know when you're hiring a worker it gives you different tiers like blue yellow orange which is skilled uh, professional artisan for the most part i think professional and artisans are the only ones you want to go for you could just skip the blue ones um just in general, skipping the RNG of this entire tier is always nice. And so I think professional and artisans are the only things that people should be going for. Ideally, you want artisans. But if you had like 
if you just wanted to get it done, uh, professional is not bad as well. So the fact that you can get a higher chance to get uh, promoted at a certain level is always good. And I think that's a good change. It's about seven years late, but I'm glad it's here. Required XP for change worker skill. Amount of XP required from 50 to 20. That's good. Increase the appearance probability of professional skilled workers. So basically when you're hiring, there's a higher chance you will get skilled and professional. And artisan stays the same. That's good. So as I said, once again, professional is something like you should get as a minimum. And if you can get artisan, obviously the better. Increased exchange limit for of trade items for bartering. Uh, I did want to make a video of this at some point. I do have like some basic stuff, but for generally bartering, I, I feel like it's not interesting to watch or learn about. I think on somewhere on the internet, you could find an entire sailing doc, or like a Google doc that uh, players have made. Here's the thing. That doc is very detailed to the point where it's like 120 pages. I can guarantee you that most people, myself included, did not read all of those pages. Um, however, it is very detailed. So if you really like sailing and bartering, that'll basically teach you what you need to do from like, let's say you're beginner one all the way to getting your Carrick. And um, yeah, it's a lot of pages. Granted, a lot of them are pictures, but 128 pages just to learn how to sail and barter. Uh, I feel like I can make a video of that in less than an hour, but you know, I do have some how to get your Carrick videos if you want to watch it. And for bartering, they're making it easier, so that's good. Removing various materials that are used uh, or like more contested and changing them around, making special barters a little bit easier for people. I think that's good. Um, <clears throat> higher chance of getting crow coins from certain things. That's cool. Improved hunting, matchlock, and sniper rifle controls. I've always thought that was a little wonky, but now that I guess it's changed, it's good, I think. Uh, I'll have to test that again. I do have uh, hunting gear, so maybe we'll make a video at some point, like next week or something. Um... Yeah, we'll see what the changes are. Old Moon Furniture Workshop. You can look at uh, basically how to craft all these furnitures without spending real money in the pearl shop. Because right now uh, you can buy them in the shop and it's just real money. But now you can craft it without spending real money, which is always a good thing. Every game should have that. And different zones and locations, how to get all that stuff. Cloud accessories are turned into Kaposha, so basically for the season, uh, you just logged in and got the things. Now they're turned into Kaposha, so you have to do some other things now to get it. It's still permanent. It was just easy to get before, and now a little bit of effort to get now. It's, either way, it's not that difficult. It's definitely worth doing. A new huge change from today was added a Mercenary's Life Scroll. So before you would get, you know how it was like the combat uh, XP buff, your daily scroll. Now you can get a life one. Life skillers, good for you. Uh, so I do value life XP a lot, actually. Like if you're trying to boost yourself to guru alchemy, this is gonna help you. So yeah, I might do that too. I've been trying to push alchemy for a while. It's just, man, it goes so slow. I wish they had mass alchemy just like they do cooking. Uh, improvements to Sakraya and Prati Cave. Big loot bonuses. Power stones. That's just like, that's overall good. So, excellent stuff. Uh, buffs for underwater. Always good. And... The only person that I really know that spends a lot of time in underwater is Zethian. And... Man does not need extra AP, but I'm glad that they're giving it to everyone else grinding there. So, 
yeah, I think it's overall good. The Feria Galleon, the new guild ship that only lasts for seven days. I think when I talked about this in another video, I I had mixed feelings of this. So basically, this is a guild ship, I believe. And it, unlike the Carrick, you can only have it for seven days. And it's only for one person. So I don't know. I still have mixed feelings about it, but... Overall, I think if it helps people kill Vel faster every Sunday, good for you. I think it's fine. Uh, cool. Now let's see. The fire rate. Cannot equip ship equipment. Dude, this, actually, this is one thing that I think should be changed in general. Enhancing boat gear for your guild boats has been very tedious. And even my guild... We've had the same boat gear for like the longest time. No one's ever bothered because no one wants to do it. And so the fact that they're coming up with a new ship where gear is irrelevant, uh, I think that's overall good because not everyone likes sailing and I get that. Um, More sailing stuff and changes. Yeah. I think that's it. So one thing I want to do before we head out is let's go back in in game for a second. All right. Oh, I blamed the new mouse. It's fine. Can you hear that click, by the way? You know what I want to do is I want to get that title, the one month exclusive title. I actually forgot how to get it. <clears throat> uh, where was it? Hold up. Lara's invitation and a special title. Okay. What was the quest called? And over beer times 70. Where was the title? <clears throat> Let's see. Let's see what we get. Tron stones. 100. Was that it? Like, hold up. What does this start? I think I've seen this. Um, me, we check again. How do we actually go about getting the title? So I want to show you guys. It doesn't even tell you. It just tells you how to do this quest. Oh. It's just in your... Let me see. Let me see what the other ones are. Oh, you have all of them? Oh. Wait, hold on. I want to hold on. I want to see where they are. Okay, so Balanos. For adventurers who have been playing Black Desert for a year, <clears throat> Serendia, two years, 
Calpheon, three years. Medaya, four years. Valencia, five years. Kama Sylvia for six years. And seven year players get Dregan. Dang, it's a gold title as well. That's pretty nice. I just, it sucks that's only for a month, but I mean, cool. Seven year players get, we get a one month title. How cool is that? I just paid 40 billion for a Nuvercant one and then worked so hard for the Orzeka one and then they just give out gold titles. So yeah, that's cool. I guess you get all of them for however many years you've been playing. That's cool. All right, well, that's it. So thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys tomorrow.